beings hate making decisions. We're doing just fine. If you're going to be successful, if you're going to become a better man, you've got to take care of yourself. You know, that thing called life calls, and you've out. got to do something about it. A bottle of wine, again. But there are times when you just think, fuck it, I just want to quit. got to learn to do the exact opposite. Starting today. What is conversion rate optimization? It's just kind of an obsession with testing. It's yeah. not small thing big. So that's it. Thank you and good night. This has been Take Traction. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Have I got to speak? <laughs> Yo, welcome back, people, to the Take Traction Show. All right, it is that time of the week to get your juice, to get your fix of Take Traction. Um, today we've got episode number 14 for you, and today's going to be a really cool episode, actually. We're discussing how to avoid the business blues. Now, look, if you are in this whole setting up your own business game, even if you're a, even if you, it doesn't really matter who you are, if you work, which everyone kind of has to work, then you're going to face burnout. You're going to have these kind of periods where shit just doesn't quite go as you expected it to or as you planned it to, and it's going to feel overwhelming. You've probably already felt it a bunch of times in your life. Certainly if you're into setting up your own businesses, which I guess most people listening to this podcast are, then it's going to be something you face a lot because you can't control how everything goes all the time and you can't succeed all the time. So when you face those potential failures, what do you do? Well, the answer is you feel like shit. And this could be on a grand scale. This could be on you know uh, uh, an entire project, an entire startup, or it could be just on a little daily thing, something that happens in the middle of the day and it causes you to feel shit for the rest of the day. So what do we do and how do we avoid these these dark feelings right and how do we how do we stay positive how do we stay motivated and how do we stay happy like that's the most important thing right because the only reason we're doing this whole thing is because we want to be happy right whatever your motivation is like if you want money if you want success if you want if you want freedom if you want happiness it's all well of course happiness it's all to do with happiness right that's your motivation so today's going to be really cool um because we are discussing what things you need to do, uh, literally a strategy that you can apply for avoiding these burnouts, right? Um, and we're going to go into it in detail at the beginning of the podcast, at the beginning of the conversation, Christian and I are just discussing some rough ideas of, you know, just the, 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 the different ways in which you can, um, you can help to overcome some of these dark feelings. And dark feelings, it sounds so depressing, dark, like welcome to the dark side, not that dark, but you know what I mean. Like these blue feelings that you get, and you just get this, this brain funk, right? This fog that you just can't get out of. Uh, and then we're going to go into some strategy, literally some strategy for happiness. And this sounds stupid, but this is something I've been applying in my life for a little over a year now, and it really, really fucking works. Um, so please listen. I think it's really going to help you out. Um, I hope you enjoy the show. Um, Take care. Thanks for now. We're live. Hey, hey, hey. Christian O'Prayer. Hey, hey, hey. Testing, testing. Testing. What's up, my brother? How you doing? All good, buddy. All good. I am, as I was telling you before this uh, this call, um, I do enjoy having those moodies. (laughs) Christian and I have been geeking out on some smoothie action recently. Um... You've been you've been doing it pretty much since the beginning of the year now, right? You've Almost, been doing yeah. it for like four months. Yeah, and I um, I do enjoy the yogurt in the morning, yogurt with seeds, kia, uh, you know, uh, flower seeds, you name it, all the necessary seeds to have a good <laughs> digestive. Seeds bowl. are great. Seeds are great, man, because it's just so it, there's so many good fats in seeds. Um, the good fats. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I was speaking with someone the other day who's got uh, some troubles with being a little bit overweight and, and I was, we were eating a salad and we, we'd gone rock climbing for the afternoon and we were eating a salad and he, um, he was like, oh, I just don't eat salads. And I was like, why? And he was like, they just never fill me up enough. And I was like, yeah, the problem is if you're eating a salad with just leaves and you're not yeah. adding any fats to the salad, then it's never going to fill you up. I was like, dude, you got to, you got to, Pour 
shit loads of olive oil on that salad. You gotta get loads of seeds and loads of healthy fats. And then that shit's going to fill you up and it's healthy. The problem is people are so afraid of fat nowadays that no one eats it. Um, but you got to get your seeds, your seeds, your nuts. Absolutely. Um, anything, any kind of good healthy fats, raw olive oil, um, coconut oil. I, so this is what I do in my smoothies, right? I put, um, I put a bunch of, uh, chia seeds and stuff in it, but I literally put maybe two, Teaspoons of coconut oil just straight Ooh. into my into the blender, and it gives um, it a, a good flavor. It gives it. it I don't really notice it. No, I don't because I put. I actually. I I use um, coconut water as like the base of the smoothie as well. All right. Um, I've never tried that before. Uh, before, so um, I might give it a shot. Yeah, because I don't use fruits at all it, like I put some berries in I have some berries in the freezer so I'll put some berries in just for a bit of flavor and some antioxidants and stuff but I I don't I use like pretty much just green stuff so yep. um so there's no juice from it so I have to pour I use like um I usually put coconut water and kefir do you know what right. kefir yeah, is yeah. like fermented yeah, yogurt yeah. as like the um the like the liquid base and then uh and then I slap a bunch of kale and spirulina or whatever you, whatever yep. you call that and all sorts of green shit that just makes it really green and smelly indeed a bit of protein a bit let, of me fat. Tell you, let me tell you a reason why i started doing this stuff because i i, I uh, a few months ago i started feeling really really bad not just physically but mentally as well and i think it was because because some a part of 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 the issue was my eating habits um yeah. you know i was eating a lot of meat and i'm not talking your grilled meat i'm i'm talking <laughs> greasy uh, fried Processed deep fried meat. everything yeah. oh man uh, mate and um after i've started doing that i felt i, I didn't feel any kind of or any kind of depression I, you know but depression um that's a tricky business <laughs> you don't realize that it it's there until it hits you this is the perfect segue christian <laughs> because this is exactly what today's podcast is about there we go avoiding the business blues and i like this title because it's something that i think no, I know that everyone goes through. You could be the most positive person in the world. You're going to, if, if you're in the business of entrepreneurship or, I don't know, I just hate that word, but if you're starting your own businesses or business, no matter how positive or how great you think your life is or how much, how strong you are mentally, you're going to come up against these really tough times where you're going to be challenged. Um, and how do you deal with it? Because there's, when it comes to that point, there are times when you just think, fuck it, I just want to quit. There's no way I can, I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I can't see how this is going to be successful. I'm a failure. Uh, the business is failing. I'm failing. I've made, I've made bad decisions. I don't deserve to be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. I've wasted money. You just get all these negative fucking thoughts that really start to fuck with your head. And it's really so how hard do you to get, get out rid of, of that. Them. Isn't it? How do you get out of that? How do you survive it? And and how do you begin to kind of adapt your lifestyle to expect these periods of not depression? I mean, depression, depression, and kind of uh, burnout and being overwhelmed—they're kind of different things. They can all happen at the same time. I think, but they're all in the same area. Is a result of not sorting out your burnout. And your failures. I would agree. I'd agree, actually. So, and, and this is a really interesting thing. Um, this is really interesting to me because I used to, when I was younger, I used to suffer quite a lot with depression. Like, especially growing up through my teens, it was a real struggle for me. And it's something that I've managed to completely control. And I don't think I've been depressed at all in the last, probably the last five years now. And that is despite 
going through a bunch of shit in my personal life. I've had very, very close ones die. I've had so many failed businesses now and I've had just so much stuff going on, but I haven't been depressed. I've been very sad, very sad at times, very, but I've avoid depre- avoided depression and, and I think I've kind of, I've learned a few things and I've really learned to manage it. And so that's some of the stuff I'd like to share today because I've kind of come up with this really weird concept. And the reason I wanted to do this podcast today was because just a couple of nights ago, I was out with a friend who's also having a bit of a difficult time now, just in general, had, you know, lost some f- friends recently, um, and you know, going through troubles at work and things like that. And so we were out for dinner and we were discussing, um, you know, I was really trying to motivate her and get a, get a, animated you know get her feeling good again and yeah. and so i was discussing what i do to to help avoid that so there's some really interesting stuff that came up and and it's always kind of interesting because a lot of this stuff goes through your head at times or goes through my head but until you vocalize it until you try and put words to it you don't really explore the idea enough so it's kind of interesting the other night to actually start kind of formatting these thoughts in my head about how to do this. And I think I came up with a pretty, a pretty cool thing. Um, anyway, before we jump into that, do you, what do you do? Are you someone that suffers with sadness or depression a lot or I think, or do you avoid it? I think uh, we, we got to um, define sadness and uh, well, or, or um, well, define sadness and depression because uh, people might confuse the two. Uh, you you might think you're depressed, but you're only sad. I think it's a tricky yeah. one, isn't it? You can always f- um, feel like you're depressed, but you're only sad at times. Yeah, I think I think one of the big things that happens to people in business is is neither of the two. It's more this feeling, it's this burnout feeling. It's this kind of temporary state of feeling like a failure. It's when you have something happen in the day and you just get in this this fog, you get in this crappy feeling that you just can't get out of and you, you just, nothing is going to be positive because you've got this big shadow on your head of this feeling of 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 the fact that you're fucking up, you're not doing things right. You're letting people down. Uh, you know, whoever told you you weren't ever going to succeed at this was right. And, and all these problems. You feel like you're wasting time a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think that's, I think that's probably one of the biggest things that people face in business. Um, but let's go outside of business for for a moment. Do you suffer with more um, de- depression? Do you ever go through bouts of pre- depression in your personal life? Um, I I, th- I think it's more more sadness now. I I, I have been going through um, a lot of depression stages in the past, but they, they, they're way behind me. Um, uh, and the reason that happened is because I started started discussing my problems with my closed ones that's Ooh. the first step i took i've i've um, uh, you know surrounded myself with um people i i love and enjoy spending time mm. with and i can open up to and that's what i've done that was the, my, my the first step in um sorting my depression so do you do you do you talk about your do because this is the, this is another thing right it can be really difficult for men um who and women i'll come on to women in a second but for men you're very much told to suppress your feelings um Indeed. you've got to be the strong example man of the family up. you've got to yeah you've got to man up right whatever the, um, that means <laughs> and up. that's just that's just a recipe for depression it's fucking um, stupid right you absolutely if you're gonna be successful if you're gonna become a better man you've got to learn to do the exact opposite if you want to become a bigger better man you've got to learn to open up absolutely so you have that it gets kind of fucked up for men but then for women in business you've got the essentially the same thing where you've got this constant doubt after thousands of years of men being or pretending to be superior to women yeah. certainly in business you know you, you go back just 50 60 years the woman wasn't 
fit to be in the working place you know that wasn't expected it wasn't normal and it wasn't you know it was frowned upon um and now fortunately those things have changed uh but so now you've got this kind of this prejudice you've got this not just the judgment of your family like oh are you going to be successful at this you're going to manage you're going to be able to do it but you've got the judgment of the world like if or at least that's the way you would, I would imagine a, a woman would feel in that situation. Like, it's not just like you're letting down your family and your friends or whatever when things start to go wrong, but you feel like you're letting down the female race, you know, you're letting down women as a whole, um, because you've got this extra pressure of like, are you going to be able to fucking do it? Are you sure? You know, you're a woman. <laughs> are you sure you're going to be able to do it? And that's wrong, obviously, but. There's constantly going to be that feeling for, for at least for some women, I should imagine. So it's pretty fucked on both sides. You've got this constant pressure, um, to be better, to be successful, to be able to support your family, to prove people wrong. And so it causes you to lock things up when really what you need to do is start talking, right? Start talking, start talking with your close one, ones, um, and talk about anything don't suppress anything absolutely anything if you know sometimes you got to suppress feelings when when it comes to business or you know a meeting maybe somebody said something that offended you or you know made made you feel uncomfortable and you couldn't react and yeah that stuff you 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 don't take to bed you you talk it through you uh, for for example what i do is i go to my wife we open a bottle of wine and just start chatting and I, I open up like a flower. Um, I don't, I, I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's really weird. It's so emotional and um, you wouldn't expect a man to be like that or the world doesn't expect a man to be like that. Um, but you know, you're in the comf comfort of your home and you can do whatever the fuck you want. And that's that's your comfort zone that's your safety zone that's where you can talk and you can say absolutely everything and you can ask for an, an honest opinion because you might ask for opinions from some people but you won't get an honest opinion yeah true so there's two in interesting things that you said there that i want to pick up on um number one is Wine, right? What wine is fucking great for this stuff. Wine in Vino is like Veritas, the, it, it, that's uh, that's the late Latin saying. In wine, there's truth. Oh, really? I like that. In, what is that? In Vino uh, Veritas. In Vino, in Vino Veritas. In Vino Veritas, of course. Yeah, in <laughs> Vino Veritas. Um, so, uh, wine, man. Having a drink at the end of the day, or doing what you need. So, so I say wine. Um, you need to have your vices in life to be able to um, relieve kind of the tension in your body. And for many people, it is wine. I'm personally a massive fan of wine, and I'm not suggesting by any means that you go and get fucked up every day on wine. I'm just saying, like, for me, two glasses of wine at the end of the day, it just helps me relax. And, and like you were saying, it helps me open up and talk to people as well and get my shit off my chest. I'm quite a person, like... For, I, I like to listen to people for years. I know it doesn't seem like it because I talk like a fucking crazy person on this <laughs> podcast, but generally speaking, when we're not recording, I like to listen to people and people like talking. People like telling you their shit. So I really try, I try my hardest to listen to people, but wine is a great mechanism for me to be able to open up and actually start talking and get my shit off my chest at the end of the day. Um, and your vice might be something completely different. Your vice might be exercise. Uh, and exercise is also a big thing for me. Um, but that might be the other thing that just relieves that tension and allows you to come home afterwards and just talk and get stuff off your chest. Absolutely. Your vice might be meditation. Um, and that helps you just feel like you open up and, and, and let shit go at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, whatever it is. Or even um, gaming. Gaming. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, well, I'm not, yeah. I struggle well, to see I'll like tell you the how, 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 game how is I, stressful though. Well, no, okay. that, that that was a way for me. That was a way to relieve stress by hitting my uh, my desk <laughs> 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 in a crazy way and shouting to people that could not listen to me or or yeah. <laughs> hear me out, you know. But all that stress 
that I uh, I've picked up during the day, I could relieve during gaming. Sounds weird. It worked, <laughs> at least for me. Yeah. Gaming, see, the thing is, though, for me, so I've never really been a gamer because it just kind of stressed me out. Like, gaming, I just find it so stressful. You get so fucking wired. You're Bumped like, <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, it's like taking cocaine. You just sit there and you're just like so on, you're so on point. You're so like focused on, on a game. Um, interesting. So I've, ne- I've never really <laughs> played games since I was like, Probably since I was like 14 or something. I have like when I've been around with friends or something and they've all been playing and I've been like, yeah, screw it. Okay. But it's really never been my thing. Th- that's um, a cool thing online. You can uh, meet up with friends and play online together, get your mic. And that's how, you know, we made jokes. We laughed uh, uh, one ab- um, about the other, you know. Very true. Very true. And that in a sense can be kind of therapy. It's not, alone. it's not necessarily going to help you open up, but it, it could be a, a type of therapy for you. Um, exercise. I can't stress the importance of exercise. Um, and this will, this will, will come on something regarding that in a second, but exercise is going to seriously help you out. If you are in business and you're not exercising right now, just do it. I mean, don't, don't even question it. Start doing fucking exercise. It's going to save you and I'll explain why in a minute. But first, I want to pick up on another thing you mentioned there, which is the fact that you open up to your wife. You get shit off your chest by talking to your wife. Um, which is massively important, but it, brings me to a very so so what do you do if you don't have that person at home to talk with at the end of the day how do that's you that's a good question um how do you do that that's a good um, question um it's very difficult it's very difficult yeah and certainly so this is so i've been living on my own now for um for about a year just over a year uh, and beforehand, I'd always lived with with my girlfriend, with her kids. And so, you know, we always had a lot of people at home and a lot of, you know, it was so easy to get home at the end of the day and just open up a bottle of wine, have a glass of wine and just talk and have those really awesome, meaningful conversations that just help you clarify your own thoughts. Very much like I was saying at the beginning of the podcast, where you can have a lot of thoughts in your head at times, but until you try and explain it in words until you try and put it out there in words you don't really understand your thoughts well enough Indeed. and that's amazing to be able to do that at the end of the day with someone at home so what do you do when you don't have someone at home i guess even up uh, an online chat with a friend you know uh, open up your webcam open a bottle of wine again <laughs> And start talking. It, yeah. it, it, the person does not need to be there. True. Physically. And, and this is... But if you go on video and you can see... Cause, cause that, that's the biggest and most important thing. Seeing the face of the person you're talking to. Seeing how they react to whatever you say. And how... how um, I don't know. To that's me, true. That's true. So I found because... I found at first when I was living on my own, I was actually very isolated at the time. I'd gone through a lot of shit in life that people don't really need to know about now. But um, I suddenly found myself living on my own for the first time in my life. And I was really bad at, because I've always been so focused on productivity. I have always avoided picking up the telephone. And I've actually, I, I used to be the kind of person that I would look at my phone twice in a day i would literally look at the screen of my phone twice in a day and reply to the to messages twice in a day but that would mean that i would ignore a lot of the messages because they'd build up and i wouldn't have time to go through them or i just i couldn't be asked to go through them basically and so i was really bad at maintaining my relationships um and keeping people close to me because i'd always been so used to just having my girlfriend there as the person did to be able to talk to and the most important relationship to me and then suddenly she wasn't there so i wasn't i didn't really know how to maintain other people close to me and utilize them as and i don't that sounds nasty to say utilize them but you you do you have to depend on your friends and your friends have to depend on you and i didn't know how to do that at all so that became super important for me because i was literally just going insane not communicating with people my only way to communicate and and have these moments where you get stuff off your chest was by going out like every night with friends um 
but it was always with the on the on the premise of like going for a drink and so then I ended up drinking more than just two glasses of wine every day so then you end up with a bit of a hangover in the morning which makes you feel even more shit about yourself you end up in a vicious circle isn't it exactly it's not really a solution so this brings me on to my idea and this idea is called the three refractal pillars of happiness right right. and 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 here's the idea bear with me on this this is kind of weird so first of all i have a very firm belief that you need to have three objectives in life you need to always have three objectives right and they need to be in different areas which are the three pillars here of your life and so those three areas are your relationships your career and your health Right. So you need to constantly makes a lot of sense. have all three of those on the go. And the reason for that is so that if one of them fails or something goes wrong in one of them, and this could be on a, on a grand scale, on a, on a big scale, as in like your business has completely failed, or it could just be a bad day, a bad morning. Right. But whatever you consider those failures to be, you need to have successes in the other two pillars. What I've noticed is that people tend to get burnt out or get depressed when they either have only one of those pillars working for them or zero. So it's not just good enough to have one of them working. You need to have two to avoid depression, right? So if your business fails, you need to be progressing in health. You need to have your goals in health. You need to be getting better. Um, whether it's like you're working out more, you're eating more healthily, whatever it may be. And you need to be developing great relationships with people. You need both of those things. To some degree, um, it's similar to owning a business. You don't depend uh, only on one sales channel. You depend on several marketing channels right you depend on facebook adwords uh bloggers advertorials you name it it's the same you you nailed it it's the same it's it's literally diversification of happiness right it's avoiding risk um the yeah. same way you'd invest i think investing is perhaps a a better uh, analogy where you 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 know that You've got, you've got your stocks. I don't know. Let's say, you know, you know, there's a stock that you, you think is going to be amazing, which could be the, a good, great comparison to your or metaphor for your business. But you're going to invest in other stocks or other asset types to hedge your risk, right? To diversify and avoid risk that comes with investing in just one, uh, stock. So it's the same here in happiness. Why would we not diversify with our happiness and, and avoid that risk? Um, and we can do this with these three different pillars of our life. Happiness, uh, sorry, health, relationships, and career. All right. And it's, 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 it's so important to do so. And, and this doesn't just work for business. It works with the other ones as well. So I was, um, You know, my, my, I won't go into details in case she's listening to this, but my sister was going through some relationship problems last year. And, and we were talking about this and I was saying, look, are you working out at the moment? And she said, no, I'm not, I'm not, I, you know, I had been doing some, some fitness and going to classes, but I'm not doing anything now. I said, you've got to start working out. Um, and you've got to focus at work. You've got to try and improve at work. Go for a promotion, you know, try and, try and do better at work because you right now, You've got problems with one, one of the pillars, which is relationships, right? And so you've got to focus on those other two pillars. Um, I'm not saying just give up on the relationship pillar. I'm saying you, ha- you need to be progressing in the other two pillars to make sure that you avoid these, this, these shit feelings to make sure that you're happy. Um, and it's really, it, it absolutely works. It absolutely works. How many times have you had that feeling? At, 
you know, when you have had a shit day and you go for a run or you go to the gym or something and suddenly everything just disappears for a moment. And yeah, it's going to come back, but that's, that's cool. It's but you, fine. You can always work out. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and here's where it gets kind of more interesting, right? Because there's different, you have different, uh, levels of control over these different pillars. Business or your career, because this applies to people who aren't starting their own businesses as well. This applies to you if you're working in a job and, you know, well, in any kind of job. Um, it's much more difficult to control the outcomes of your career. Things are going to go up and things are going to go down. Ultimately, you know that you're going to be successful, but it's going to be a fucking bumpy ride along the way. And you just, there's no way of really knowing what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. The markets could crash tomorrow and you could suddenly lose your job. It, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Things can go to shit in any moment. Um, so you have less control over your business, right? Your career, your relationships. And I think your health are on a pretty much similar level, but we'll come on to health in a moment. Your relationships, you have much more control over. You, why aren't you nurturing relationships? You know, there's no reason why you can't nurture re relationships. And that's going to make you feel great. Like if you've gone through those periods where you haven't maintained good contact with your parents or with your friends or, or your siblings or whatever it is. Um, and then you go back to, to making the effort. And this is something I focus on a lot at the moment. I've really been making an effort a lot recently to, to maintain contact and, and, build those relationships with with the people that are close to me when you start doing that you just feel fucking great about it you feel like you're not alone in the world you feel like you've got people with you and you've got love around you absolutely and that, that's amazing to me and, at least and uh, go on sorry no go for it uh to me you know i i feel really feel really guilty if i don't call my parents uh, for three days or so and it, it's not about feeling guilty but I, but i know i want to call them i know i want to you know spend time with them i know they'll you know some sometime uh, they'll someday they'll they'll uh, they'll go away <laughs> yeah and true. there's nothing i can do about it and why wouldn't i spend time with with them where while they're they're here Exactly. Love it. So that's exactly it. You've got to, you've got to work on those relationships, right? You've got to nurture those relationships. Um, and, and you have a lot more control over them. And, and then the last one is your health, right? And you've got crazy amounts of control over your health. Now you may have some unfortunate genetic disorder or disease that causes you to have bad health, right? In some aspect. But that's just in one aspect, right? There are so many areas that you can be working on your health. Even if you're completely disabled from the waist down, you can still be working out your arms. You can still be eating healthily. You can still have many, many objectives within health, right? So there's a lot of opportunity to succeed. So this is the thing. We're trying to make ourselves succeed. We're trying to always allow ourselves the opportunity to succeed even when we're failing in something else. And your business can be falling apart. But if you're getting that six pack you always wanted um <laughs> then you're gonna feel better about yourself it sounds stupid to say that you know oh i feel better just because i've got a six pack but but you are you are gonna feel better about about the situation well i've um, lost the seven uh, seven kilograms in uh you in, in, in two months and i'll tell you what i'm i feel fucking great yeah. <laughs> i'm feeling good there you go exactly i don't have the six packs yet but I feel good. I feel, I, I can, <laughs> I can do uh, whatever I want without feel, feeling tired. And to me, that's exactly. success. It, it, it gives me power to move, move on and do more. Yeah. Things. And you need to have this kind of sensation as well of, um, you know, I often think this is, I think this is something I probably first learned from Tim Ferriss's book, The Four Hour Work Week, where he, you know, this, this, you go through this thought process of what happens if you lost, what would happen if you lost everything today, right? If you lost all your money, all of your wealth, all of your belongings, what would you do? What's the worst thing that can happen to you, right? And when you really think it through, 
it's actually not that bad. We often have this fear of losing everything, but when you think it through, it's not that bad. You, what would happen? Like you'd end up on the street. Okay. And what are you going to do then? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll fucking beg until I have enough money to get a bucket and a sponge and I will clean windows until I have enough money to buy a bigger bucket and a bigger sponge. And then I will, yeah, you know, you just work your way up. You, they, they, nothing's ever gonna, nothing's ever gonna, you know, being the person that you are, that nothing too bad can ever happen to you. And certainly less so or more so, whichever, you know, this, you have more certainty in this. If you have friends and family around you and you have your health, right? So even if your business and your house got set on fire or whatever, if you've got those other pillars to lean on, then you're going to be okay. So I'll um, tell you a little story. Uh, please do. I've been through such a, uh, such a uh, part of uh, a stage of my, in my life. Um, so I was, I kept saying to myself, what if uh, tomorrow I didn't have anything? And I, I, I kept thinking about this, about losing everything. And you know what? One day I've lost it. I've, I've lost it. I've, I've lost every every single penny I've uh, um, saved in, in in the last seven years. How did that it. happen? How did that happen? A bad a bad decision. Um, I went in business with the wrong kind of people. I got fucked over. I lost it. I lost it. I've, I've lost everything. And you know, at first. <laughs> Um, you pity yourself, uh, you go through all those stages and it's normal. Don't feel bad because you're, you're, you're going through all those stages. You, you feel help, uh, helpless. You feel anger. You feel depressed. You, you go through all those stages. But that's when I realized I gotta open up. I gotta, I gotta change my state of mind because nothing yeah. good will ever happen if uh, or, or nothing will would change if i don't change the way i think and feel so that's yeah. when i realized i should start t- talking more and i started talking today yeah I've, I've i've talked with my wife i've 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 uh, surrounded myself with, with with a lot of friends uh, through some wild parties you know where where you know people <laughs> would cheer you up just by making some fucking stupid jokes but you know it, yeah. you were surrounding or uh, surrounded with with the right people and and here's the thing that i think um happens to you when those moments when those moments happen and it could be losing all your money it could be losing it could be the loss of a loved one right oh yeah the problem that that happens is that i think we realize in those moments that we're too heavily invested in one area of life, right? We're too heavily invested in one of these pillars. Certainly in business, I mean, with relationships, it's a little bit more complicated because you want to be pretty heavily invested in relationships. But in business, when you lose it all, it, it, you tell me, Christian, but I imagine that it must give you this feeling of shit. I, I'd been so focused on all that stuff for so long and now it's gone. It was worth nothing. Yeah. Was it even necessary? Like I was, I was so dependent on this thing working for my happiness. You know, what was the point? What was the you need? I feel like the last seven years of, in my case, I, I felt like this last seven years of my life meant absolutely nothing. Yeah. Which was not true. You know, I, I, uh, I met my wife, uh, you know, um, I, we, I, I had so many great moments with my family, with my friends, but all that didn't mean anything at that point because I was so involved and, um, you know, involved in this business uh, and in, I don't know, um, that business. I was so pumped up about making a lot of money. I think that's the, the biggest issue. Making a lot of money before I'm 30, I want to have a house, I want to have that and that and that. And that was so important to me that I couldn't find satisfaction in those moments, th- those pleasant moments with your family, with, your fr- with my friends, with my family. I couldn't yeah. 
I couldn't go past that. Yeah. And then you lose it and you go, fuck, well, now I've, I can't depend on that for my happiness, for my motivation, for my drive. So now I've got to depend on my family. And suddenly it puts everything in perspective, right? Yep. That's, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad it happened. You know what? I don't regret a, a, a single moment of that harsh period in my life. I don't regret it yeah. because it made me stronger. It made me better um, value family and friends. Good. I like that. And and that's that's super valuable. That's super valuable. I think and it's really a lot of things. Really important for people to hear that actually because it's um you know you could you could lose it all at any moment. And there's you no, there's survive. no need to be, there's no need to be fearful of that, right? There's no need to be afraid of that. Life's a bitch. <laughs> Life is a bitch. If there's anything I've learned in these past few years, it's like, life's a bitch. You are no more than a fucking animal, right? You have no, you have no s divine worth. You are not special. Um, and I'm sorry to people who are religious out there listening to this, but, um, as far as I'm concerned, you are a bug, right? You are no different to a dog or a cat or a deer, or a lion, or whatever. You are an animal on this earth, and you've got to survive. And the problem is we are so fucking protected by society nowadays, especially the millennial generation, right? We are being born right now into a world of simplicity, of easiness, right? Of It's just like you are so protected. And certainly it depends on where you come from as well. I can say this as someone who comes from, from England, um, a very, very secure, wealthy country. And you are just so protected, right? You have this constant feeling of nothing can ever happen to me. Like nothing can ever happen to me. You've got the police there to protect you. They actually protect you in England rather than trying to harm you, which is kind of strange for most people in different countries. Um, I say that as someone who's living in Mexico right now, which is a, which is a very different situation. You've got healthcare, which, mind you, the healthcare is shit in England now. But you know, you've you've, you've just got this society to protect you. Um, and I remember with a girlfriend years ago, whose um, grandfather died, and I remember it was it was such a shock to her because nothing really kind of that um, sad had happened to her in her life because everything was just not perfect. I don't want to say that to be harsh on her, but everything was so protected. Um, you know, she was so. Uh, cushioned and and rightly so like you should be you know if, if i mean if you're fortunate enough to have money in your family and have uh your parents together and and everything just be kind of hunky-dory you know be happy <laughs> then it should be but there's also we've lost this um we've lost this this natural process of pain and suffering from a very young age um and i think it's really affecting us with regards to depression, um, we've got more depressed people than ever right now in the history. And I, and that's, um, I think I, I, I've been list, I've heard this recently. It's not based on the number of people because obviously the population is growing, but it's based on percentage of people in the world that are suffering with depression. It's increasing. It's growing, right? And, I think a massive part of that is to do with our diet. I think that seriously affects us. Um, and another massive part is to do with stress. The every, you know, every year people are under more and more pressure to work harder, to perform better at work. And I think that's a massive part of it. But I think another big part is that we're just not used to suffering anymore. We're not used to the bad shit happening. Um, and we got to get back to that. We've got to get back to the roots of understanding what it is to be a human being. That's nothing special. You are what you are. You've got this one moment to live and that's it. And what are you going to do with it? You know, I think, uh, you know, you learn more from mistakes and bad things happening to you than success and having a, a fluffy life. Yeah, massively so. And I mean, um, who, who is on. it that said, um, like, I, 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 to be honest, I kind of don't like these sayings. People always say, you know, fail fast, 
fail hard and fail fast, right? That's like the number one <laughs> saying within a startup these days, which I think is kind of bullshit. I'm like, no, yep. if you can get it right the first time and succeed, then you should, right? Don't go out there trying to fail because that's just fucking stupid. Um, but you, you definitely do take so much from your failures and not, not just your failures, but just the bad moments in life, whatever it may be. Um, you know, we, I've been, I've been referring to these as failures within the three pillars today. But, you know, the death of your mother or the death of your wife or husband, that's not a failure on your part. It's just kind of bad luck. Um, but that's why you need to have the other two pillars. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting, right? So we were talking about diversification earlier. And this, and you know, I, I, I said that this is about the three refractal pillars, right? So what we have is that we can then diversify within each of these pillars to hedge our risk even more, right? So within, for example, within nutrition, we can have different areas that we're trying to improve. So we may have our, we may have uh, within health, sorry. So we may have nutrition, right? We want to start eating healthier. Um, you want to improve the way we feel mentally through through what we're eating. We want to also start doing more fitness and get physically stronger, right? That's another objective within the health category. And we may also want to start running. So we're going to start running longer distances and have better stamina, right? Those are three different pillars. And then within each of those three pillars, we may have within nutrition, we're trying to... um decrease our, I don't know, we're trying to decrease our cortisol levels uh, through nutrition. I don't even know if that's possible. I think that's all stress. But we're trying to increase our testosterone for a man because you feel like you need more testosterone or whatever. You're trying to... Um, what, you know, what are the different things you're trying to improve with your nutrition? Then within your running, it may be like your, your running, you're trying to improve your leg strength at the gym so that you can actually have more force when you're running um you know you've got all these different this is completely refract refractal right so you can keep going down and having these different objectives within each pillar and the more you do that i suggest that after one level or two levels you stop because you're going to go insane otherwise but the more you do that the more you're diversifying and hedging your risk against these problems that can occur in your life and this isn't something you necessarily need to apply as a strategy like have this all written down on paper and know exactly what you're going to do it's something you need to try and adopt and just let it form part of your life and your way of living over time um, um, but when you do it really really changes things and I can say that now as someone who's been doing it for for at least a year now I've really been focusing on that um, and we have, so I have my business, my health and my relationships within business. I've got lots of different things going on, completely diversified in that. Um, you know, we, we've been working on the podcast. We've been working with clients. We're working on building our own e-commerce business. We're working with Amazon. I've been doing a refurbishment on a house to sell a house. Um, there's so much different shit going on. Uh, with relationships, I've been really get keeping, really trying to focus on who are those friends who are actually real friends in life who are the people that really really matter who are the people that are going to be there at the end of the day when everything falls apart and working on building those relationships and in fact i'm i'm trying to mix that because I, I want to even build an application uh, with this idea that i've got based on uh, how to nurture relationships um and I've literally got a bunch of reminders on my phone. I've literally set up reminders, and this is kind of a, a bit of an introduction to the app I want to build. I literally have reminders that are repeat reminders, right? And it's not like every week, but this uh, I have a reminder that will repeat every two months to send a message. Nothing more than that, but to send a message to certain people, right? So I've got different reminders for different people, the people that are most important to me. And I, I send a message to them and go, how you doing? Miss you. What's going on? What's, tell me what's happening in your life. And Sometimes before, that's enough. 
Exactly. And that starts a conversation and suddenly you're on the phone and you're talking about stuff and you're making plans to go on holiday together or whatever. Um, and beforehand, I was always the person that people would write to me and go, hey, what's happening? I haven't heard from you in a year. How are you doing? Everything okay? And I'd be like, fuck, I wish I was that person, right? I wish I was the person that was always the glue, right, that held everyone together. I wish I was the person that was always reaching out to people and maintaining or nurturing the relationships. So I've had that going on that I've been really working on as well. But then within my relationships pillar, I've always also been working on spending a lot of time with my family, right? I've been seeing my parents a lot, spending time on, on vacation, on holiday with them. Um, and, and just really getting to spend some quality time with, with family, which is something I hadn't done for years. I left my country like five, six years ago. Um, so, you know, I haven't really had much quality time with family in since then. So I've been really working on that as well. And then, um, and then health, you know, I've, I've spent about a year now really working on health and all different areas of it as well, working within. So these are again, the different, uh, the different fractal, um, areas of my health i've been working on my diet i've been working on cutting out carbs i've learned that I've, I've got a bunch of back problems i've been going to see physiotherapists about my back problems i've learned that a lot of my pain in my back comes from inflammation which is caused by consumption of carbohydrates so i've been working on that in my nutrition i've been doing crossfit i've been running i ran a half marathon um i've been working on all these different areas of health and it's like you want to take down one of these areas of my life right now be my guest. I couldn't give a fuck because I'm nailing it in so many different areas, right? I'm having such a good time in so many different places that you're not going to bring me down by just fucking up one of those things. Does it make sense? Yeah. And, um, what do you think? We, we, we haven't talked about this before. What do you think about this idea? Um, I think 80% we're on the same level. Uh, we've been doing the same things without discussing it. <laughs> there you go. Because, uh, you know, um, again, with my health, I know that, you know, any kind of exercise uh, I, I, I make, endorphins will, uh, will uh, go through my veins and, uh, you know, that brings you happiness into your life. I, uh, 100%. Uh, working out w would, um, would um, lower my back problems. Um, um, I don't know, running could uh, could in, uh, could solve my mental state yeah uh, um eating Let, let's talk about a healthy diet i've i haven't eaten anything greasy in so long now <laughs> that i whenever i see unhealthy food it makes me puke <laughs> and that's what healthy food does to you. I, I never realized it till I started eating healthy. And after three yeah. months, and I'm, I'm not talking a year or two, I'm, after three months, I cannot eat anything greasy. I'll, I'll puke. Yeah, 100%. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I, I've been working out. I've been um, um, uh, eating healthy. Um, I, I, I have... Um, each morning, I drink uh, a glass of water with um, with lemons. Uh, you know, I have all, I have all these we're things. We're doing the that same do. thing. <laughs> really? So this, this is really interesting. Yeah. So I'm I've just started reading. So there's a new book out by I forget his surname. His name's Aubrey, which is actually his middle name because he changed it. Aubrey, I can't think who. He's the CEO or the founder of On It which is a company that you go to on it.com o double n i t i'll put it in the show notes um it's a company that um that sells like they've got this product called alpha brain which is a nootropic to help improve cognitive function they sell a bunch of kind of fitness equipment they sell they sell all sorts of shit that's related to your health and well-being let's say um right. And he has, he's a good friend of Joe Rogan's, right? They're close friends and Joe Rogan's right. actually heavily invested in the company. I think they're technically kind of, they own the similar amounts of the company. Uh, and Joe Rogan talks a lot about this stuff as well, about optimizing your day and things like that. And so the, the, this, the founder, Aubrey, I can't think, I'm sorry, I'm going to put his name in the, um, in the show notes along with, uh, along with the book name. I think the book is called, so, Right. I'm jumping way ahead of myself. This guy, Aubrey, has brought out a book just now, right? And it's called 
something like win the day win your life or something like that shit i should really know this i've got it on my kindle in my bag here with me um but i'll put it in the in the show notes and and it's actually a really cool book i've got to give credit to the guy um it's all about optimizing your day it's kind of about this idea of having the perfect day right um all these things that are in your control. Remember, trying to control things that aren't within your control is just for crazy people. So this is all about things that are within your control. And and he talks about, you know, the, the fact that all of these things... So if you start the day great, then you're going to be feeling great in the middle of the day. And then you're going to be able to sleep well at night and then you're going to be able to start the day great again the next day. It's going to, it's like this compounding effect of feeling great, of doing great. And, um, and a lot of the stuff he mentioned, I've just read the, the, the kind of how he suggests to start the morning and I've been applying it for the past three days. And then it's just the case of with, as soon as you wake up drinking a shitload of water because you've essentially been dehydrating for about seven or eight hours while you've been asleep, right? You haven't drunk any water, which is a long time to not drink water. So wake up and drink a load of water. Have it with lemon and slap in a teaspoon or half a teaspoon of sea salt, right? To get a bunch of minerals um, in your body, a bunch of potassium, magnesium, sodium, whatever. Get a bunch of minerals uh, in your body. Um, cause that's going to help you retain the water and feel better uh, as a result. Also within 20 minutes of waking up, do exercise and it's not a workout, right? So you can do anything. Just move your body, get the blood circul circulating, circulating through your body. Um, go for a 20 second run, right? To do what I've been doing is I do 20 burpees, right? Just in the bathroom, literally in my boxes, I'm doing 20 burpees just on the floor and 20 burpees like that'll fuck you like you'll be your heart rate will get up and you'll be feeling like fucking warm and pumped and you've just woken up but it you that's going to get everything moving it's going to release endorphins into your brain and you're going to start feeling great straight Absolutely. from the morning and even even a glass of water with lemon water will will <laughs> wake up all your organs yeah drink yeah, that 100 percent. <laughs> yeah Yeah, completely First thing agree with you want to do in the morning is drinking water. Yeah. So, so Very here's my thing. recipe for, for the mornings, right? I wake up, I wait, take wait, a... Wait, wait, Can I just finish this oh, one? Oh, sorry. My apologies. Little, Go this on. little process. So doing, doing your exercise, right? Then jump straight in the shower after you do your exercise. Um, and it can be, you might just want to do like yoga for three minutes or something. Do like five yoga positions and that's just going to get you really warm and get that blood moving. I like the burpees because it's quick and easy to do. Um, and I love, I, I really like burpees because they suck. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I like burpees because they kind of, they, it, it works the entire body, right? Um, and it just, it just gets every part of your body moving. So it's a, for me, it's a great way to start the day. Jump straight in the shower afterwards, right? Turn the, have a hot shower on. Uh, I wash my hair with the hot water and then I take This is all recommended in the book. So these are, this is me paraphrasing basically from the book. Six deep breaths and turn off the hot tap and switch it straight to cold, pure cold water. And this is something I've been doing for a long time. I've been having cold showers anyway. And, and all of this stuff isn't exactly new to me. I've just never really been so strategic with it or applied it so religiously. Whereas now I'm, I'm really following this in the mornings. So I then I'm under the cold water which I love, it feels fucking great. It wakes you up. You just feel amazing. And I'll spend, I'll try and stay on it for about two minutes. So I get as much of the water on my, on the top of my back and on the top of my chest, which is, and, and on my head, which is really going to cool down your, your body temperature. Um, and get out the shower. And then the, the next most important thing to do within 20 minutes of waking up is to get light on your skin, get blue light, like white light, right? The, the, you know, the kind of light you get from the sun. Um, and you can get it from like bright office lights and things like that as well, but get some of that light on your skin as quickly as possible. And, you know, he talks about how it's kind of difficult when you're in winter or you're in like Northern countries where there's, Northern European countries or like Alaska or something where there's not much light at all. Um, 
And in the book, he talks about ways you can, you can solve that. Um, so you can check that out in the book, but yeah, get some light on you as quickly as possible. And this is something I so typically do, especially if I'm working from home. I just used to get up. I would literally like jump in the hot shower, put some clothes on, sit down on the sofa with my laptop. I haven't even like opened the curtains yet. And I just start answering emails, right? I haven't had any light on my skin. I haven't had any water. I haven't moved my body. All right. I'm just fucked. So I do that and then I'm actually also incorporating a smoothie as well, right? And so I have, like we were saying earlier, then instead, actually instead of having the lemon and salt in the water, I, I'm just having water as soon as I wake up. And once I've done my exercise, cold shower, I've got some light on my skin, I'll then make a smoothie and I'm just chucking a bunch of shit in there, like a bunch of amazing stuff that really gets the day going. I'm putting kale in there, spinach, I'm putting like all sorts of powders like matcha, green tea, um, uh, spirulina, uh, coconut oil, as I was saying before, cinnamon. Uh, I put some, I put a scoop of protein in there as well to get my protein levels up in the morning. Um, and so I've got a bunch of protein and healthy fats and a bunch of nutrients and minerals in my body uh, straight from the get-go. And this whole routine, right, it it takes it does probably take about 45 minutes to an hour, all right? So it's a little bit longer, so I'd normally take like half an hour to get up in the mornings. But, man, I'm feeling fucking great. I feel fucking amazing all day. Um, I'm just feeling great. So I'd highly recommend doing it highly recommend doing it it works for me it does um so i'm excited to see what's the what's in the rest of the book um you know it's cool because this is a guy he's not like i was talking about about this with you a couple of days ago christian this isn't some guy who's like being like some obsessed freak about being optimal optimal all the time and stuff this is some guy who he smokes a bunch of weed you know smokes a joint in the evenings he's always taking psychedelics um you know and just he's just a regular guy he's covered in tattoos you know a completely regular guy but um which i like because to me that's much more relatable than this kind of nerdy guy who's optimizing everything um so it's much more relatable uh and it's working so I highly recommend it. Go and give it a uh, give, go and give it a go. I'm not uh, I'm not endorsed or anything for talking about this guy. By the way, no relation whatsoever. Doesn't have, even have a clue who I am. Just uh, highly recommend the book. Really cool. All right. So sorry. What was your morning routine? My morning routine. Um, so every day I wake up. Um, I I drink a, a big glass um, of water with lemon. Then I take a sp- big spoon of sea buckthorn plus Ooh. honey I, I don't know if you know what sea buckthorn is no fucking idea those small orange fruits really really good for the liver you you should try it and propolis i don't know if that's okay. the right way to say it. propolis right no fucking again i don't know i don't know I don't <laughs> all <stuff>. right <laughs> it's made of out of uh, honey um cool. so that that that's really healthy really good it it pumps me up really good and then i take a shower and just you know uh take half an hour talk with my wife see how she's doing uh um, call some friends call my parents if if you know it's easier to call anyone in the morning so yeah i would so recommend that as well right speaking with people early in the morning yeah right don't just jump straight into your work. Call someone. Yeah. If you work at an office, and this is this is good advice for an entrepreneur, right? Uh, especially a solopreneur or someone working remotely. If you work in an office within a company, then it's much easier because you're going into the office and you start communicating with people from the very beginning of the day. But if you work on your own at home, that and you are not communicating with people, then it is super important, I think, to call someone in the morning to speak with someone because if you just jump straight into your work it's like you haven't spoken with anyone you jump up you like quickly brush your teeth and just put on some clothes and start working start answering emails and then you go until like 10 or 11 o'clock and you haven't actually communicated with anyone yet in the day suddenly someone calls you and it's like you've forgotten how to speak you don't even you're like your head's fucked because you're like just so you're like in work mode and you just haven't really worked out how to socialize yet in the day. So I think calling someone in the morning is super important. Um, 
and this is a great opportunity to take advantage of one of the other pillars, which is your relationships, right? Call a friend, call your dad, call your sister, call your son, call your daughter, call whoever the fuck you want. Just give someone a call. Um, I think it really helps. Sorry, you were saying. There's there's a reason why you should call everyone in the morning, or not everyone, but (laughs) but the most uh, important people uh, (laughs) in your life, uh, is because during the day you won't have time to yeah, uh, to true. call them you might be stressed out and if they call you during the day uh, you might you like act like off. a you you might act <laughs> like like an asshole which i've yep. done so many times I've been there. Uh, yeah. you know people forgive you but for how for how long or for how, how many times can you get that shit done without being punished right true very true um, so That's that's why I do it. I do it in the morning. That that's uh, yeah. that's the first. So after after I do that, I I, uh, I have a chat with my wife. Uh, see how she's doing. Uh, if, um, if if she needs something from me during the day, so I can plan it out beforehand. Yeah, and just jump on my uh, chair and start working. I'm glad you said chair. <laughs> on my horse or my pony <laughs> <laughs> jump on my horse and, and get down to work <laughs> gotta get on my horse and get out get out to the office head down to the shack and start the day there we go um i have I, a friend right who calls her both her parents every single morning She speaks with her parents, both parents, every single morning. Yeah. How crazy is that? It, it, and uh, she's not enjoying it. Or do you find... She's been this... doing it her entire life. She's like nice. 38. Yeah. It's not she's weird. been doing it it's, her entire life. And there are times when she's like, oh, I, like, I have to speak to my parents or something, like if we're really hung over or something like that. And I'm like, well, well, just send them a message. So like, yeah, but it's weird if I've been doing it for like 20 <laughs> years or something and suddenly I don't do it. Now it's like it's a problem. So she speaks with her parents every single day. She feels guilty. Day. That, that's, that, well, see, that, that's well, it's not. No, it's not just guilt. I mean, I think she gets as much pleasure from it as they do. Like it, she, I guess so. honestly, she's really happy with it. Like I personally couldn't do it. Like that's too much for me. But, but she really enjoys she, it. I mean, <laughs> if, if she, she, she's uh, hungover, she, You can skip a day, can you? <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. Because it'll be like, what, what the fuck, what's happened? Especially because she's living in Mexico now as well. And there's like earthquakes all the time. And you just get killed on the street and shit like that out here. So yeah. her parents are so worried all the time. If she doesn't call, it's like, is she okay? What's happened? You know. There we go. So I think that's super important. Speaking with people in the mornings. Um, speak with someone. And this is why I love the podcast, right? Um This is another thing. Why not start a podcast? You don't need to have an audience of thousands of people, right? We've, we haven't, right now, as if, as it is right now, that you listening to this podcast, you are probably one of about 20 people, right? And I know we're going to have more listeners in the future, <laughs> but, um, but we haven't got many people listening to this. It's just a, a fantastic way to really get your thoughts out of your head. Um, Like I was saying earlier, get those things out of your head so you can actually get more clarity on your thoughts. And second of all, how, right, so tell me this, how do you feel when we finish a podcast, right? We do these podcasts for people listening out there on Skype and, we, um, um, and we've got each other on video right now. And then we finish the podcast, we maybe chat for a couple of minutes, and then we end the phone call and we go and carry on with our day. We've got lots of work to do. Um, tell me, Christian, how do you feel for like, an hour two hours after doing the podcast um satisfaction that's what i feel satisfaction uh, it's um, something i've been scared of doing and i'm doing it which <laughs> increases the level of satisfaction <laughs> in my life yeah. even even more because it's something you haven't done before you were scared of doing but you're still doing it and you're successfully talking for one hour and you're doing it that's that's yeah. I, i love it i feel you know 
and I say that as an example with the podcast, you can talk with any, it doesn't have to be a podcast. We've obviously got the added benefit of doing something that's kind of productive for us with the podcast, but it could be just speaking to your dad for an hour, speaking with your friend or whatever. I think just having a conversation for any period of time in the morning, it, it literally does something to your brain. It releases endorphins. It gives you a buzz, right? And yep. I finished the podcast like, I don't know, for some reason it's like talking gives mental clarity to me, right? When I spend too much time in my head, I get brain fog. I get blurred. I can't see straight. And when I talk, it gives me that clarity. And so when I finish the podcast, because you've been quite intense, you've been trying to maintain a conversation and thinking clearly and expressing your thoughts and stuff, that forced expression of those ideas that are inside your head and you trying to work out how to somehow make sounds through things that we call words so that someone else can understand what you're saying and this whole process that's going on in your head it causes some kind of brain activity so that when you finish that conversation you feel fucking great and you feel clarity and then if you, if you go and sit down and try and work after that so let's say you've woken up and you've you've called your friend your dad or whatever and you've had a chat for 10 minutes 15 minutes You've had to talk about what you were doing yesterday and express all those thoughts. You've had to ex talk about some, I don't know, some family matter that you're dealing with. And you've just been using your brain, right, to express yourself. If you then go and sit down and work, you're going to be in a much clearer state of mind. Um, you're going to have much more clear, refined thoughts. And I can because relate of that to conversation. that, to, to, to be honest, because... Um, like a year ago, I think, uh, I started realizing I'm having problems or difficulties in, in, in expressing myself and, and uh, getting everything out of, um, out of my mind and yeah. explaining things to people. Yeah. Which was really weird because I, I, I've never had that problem. But being so focused on work and nothing else. Yeah made me lose touch i've definitely had that same problem definitely. and i had i had so many brain freezes and uh, you know I, I would go out like after four or four weeks i would go out with somebody and i couldn't have a decent conversation which just was yeah. weird frustrating and annoying you i don't can't know. get shit out of your head <laughs> oh yeah. man you need it's, to it's practice so... getting shit yeah. out of your head so i thought it's not just like yeah. it's not just the shit it's not just vocalizing it. It's not just working on that skill. What happens with the vocalizing it is you're actually, you're giving yourself more clarity internally as well, right? When you are, when you're that, that fucked and you can't express yourself or what you're thinking, you can't find the right words to speak. It's not like a problem with your speech. It's a problem with the way you're forming your thoughts in your head. Yep. Right. You're not, you're not, you're not thinking we're social beings, right? We're social animals and entrepreneurship and even jobs, any kind of fucking job these days. It's so stressful that we focus so much on our work and we forget what it is to be a social animal. Um, at least I think this is something that happens a lot with, with people who are very productive and very motivated and very focused on, on success or whatever you want and that, whatever you define success to be. Um, you, you get too focused on these things and you forget the importance of those raw things that we have as animals, these necessities as human beings, as primates to socialize and to love and to, to, to be healthy and be happy. You know, we forget about a lot of that stuff. Well, you yeah. need it. You need it to function. You got to talk. You got to talk about shit if you want your head to work. Right. Yeah. It's a great exercise. Pill. It's a free one. <laughs> exercise your brain because you, <laughs> you know what, what else I, I've done? Simona was playing some, uh, some games on her tablet. Uh, you know, f find hidden objects, uh, l logic games. Oh man, it, it pumped up my brain. Uh, those games pumped up my brain so hard. I, I, you know, everything made sense. I could yeah. express myself really, really fast and concise. Well, that's why they actually say is that there's a lot of research being done at the moment on gaming. You come yeah. in full circle in this conversation on gaming um, and the actual, I think there's research being done that's proving that gaming uh, can help prevent Alzheimer's. Yeah. 
uh, and, and maintain cognitive function in old age. And it's kind of weird because we haven't really had the generation reach old age yet with gaming in our lives because gaming is a relatively new thing in the whole history of human beings. Um, and so now they're starting to be able to do studies on people that are showing the effects of long-term gaming and, and the effect it has on your brain. And, and it's actually showing to be really positive. I think it's going to fucking screw up your social life and <laughs> potentially your relationships and other things like that. But it is showing to have a lot of, uh, a lot of positive effects on your brain function. So that's kind of cool. Kind of interesting. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, I'll, I'll mention uh, some guys uh, from Lumos Labs. They, they've created Lumosity. That's the game. And every day they train your brain. Like, what was that? How do you games. spell that? How do you spell that? I want to put it in the show notes. L U M O S I T Y. Lumosity. Cool. All right. I'll put that in the show right? notes, guys. Yeah. Right. And this, I mean, uh, I think it's free. And you have each day they, they, um, they make you go through, um, uh, uh, four games or something like that and each game has um has a different um um what do you call it different things to do it, it they they um some some of them work your uh, motion skills some of them work your logic skills some your some uh, some of them work your mathematical uh, knowledge and skills again you, you know uh, four plus four minus two what is it you know it, it, it's really hard to to, uh, to lose so, track uh, with math and simple math i'm not because you know technology yeah, makes dude. us stupid nowadays unfortunately i, agree. <laughs> I couldn't agree more i really want to go back and do like um like m maths from i want to do like the whole curriculum of of, ed of secondary education maths yeah again because like i didn't pay any attention i actually did quite well i remember getting an a which for people in different countries an a is like one of the top grades you only got an a an a plus a plus was it an a star a plus i don't even know how it works anymore but i got a, i got an a in in maths but i didn't pay attention i can't remember any of it now like algebra <laughs> that's fucking beyond me i mean i can do basic algebra but i know there are so many more applications of algebra and i love i'd really love to be able to do physics mathematics uh and learn kind of the mathematics of the world um yeah. and i don't have a clue so i really want to go back and do that um christian i'd love to carry on talking but we've we're, we're taking too long here where this has been we are like, a great podcast um we've been going for over an hour now so let's call it a day and and perhaps we'll come back to this subject um in summary though I really want people to focus on those three pillars. If you're listening to this, uh, I can't, I can't recommend it highly enough. Give it a try. It's really going to help you, um, to, to diversify and avoid risk of depression, of sadness or whatever your, your version of hell may be. Right. Um, so give these three pillars a go focus on them remember that they're refractal so you can they're refractal or fractal they're fractal. fractal so you can you can diversify more and more but to begin with just get those three pillars going right if you're not working out right now and you're in business go and fucking run do a push-up do something all right anything <laughs> just do it you gotta do it um and some other things go and work i would, on those I would recommend Right, go and give your mum a call. See oh, how she's doing. yeah, call your mum, call your sister, call call any any relative. <laughs> Just yeah. call 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 somebody. A friend. If you don't have any family, go and call a friend. Yeah, go and speak to, to someone on the street. Go and say hi to a homeless person. See how that makes yep. you feel. That'll make you yeah. fucking smile. I tell you. Yeah, it'll make that person smile. There you go. Because not that many people talk to them, unfortunately. True. Exactly. So a few things I I, I might add. One, take a break. If you feel like shit and you, if you feel overwhelmed, just take a break. Just take a break. No connection to internet, no anything. Go to the mountains with some friends, hitchhike, yeah. do anything, but, you know, break any connection to the, uh, the digital world. And I agree. When, when you're in a funk, problems. 
when you're in a funk, when <laughs> I like that word, when you're in a brain funk. funk, right? And you're just like feeling shit. I actually had one of these yesterday, right? In the afternoon, mm. I got in a brain funk and I was just feeling shit. Nothing is going to happen if you stop working for two hours, right? Or even half a day or even a whole or day. A day like or in a the, week in, even. In your entire life, that's not going to be relevant. Go and take a break. Don't just... You know, it's not even good enough sometimes just walk around your house or walk around the garden or something. Get out. Go and do something. Go somewhere. Get your mind off it. Come back to it with fresh eyes and you'll feel much better. Yeah, go away from everything. Just just yeah. run. run. It's not about running away from your problems, but just putting them on hold. You know, I run agree. away. Very well week. put. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. And uh, um, I guess... I guess that's that's about it. That is it. As always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We have now officially got the... And we record these a little bit before... Uh, I need to speak Spanish then. That was weird. Um, we record these a little bit beforehand, so you'll be listening to this uh, maybe a month or so after we've recorded it. But... Um, go and check out the new podcast section on the website uh, you can see all of the podcasts on there um, we will at some point as well be getting transcripts of these podcasts but on the website so you can go and check them out and you'll be able to check out the show notes so like any links like today we're going to have the link to on it we have a link to that book i was talking about we're gonna have a link to lumosity that you can use to train your brain um you have all the links on there and if there was some part of the conversation that you wanted to go back over and get some clarity on you'll be able to go through the transcript and, and, and find it there as well um, so go and check us out over the website the other cool thing about the website is that you can leave us comments right? you can't really leave comments on iTunes or on whatever podcast app you're using on this specific podcast episode but on the blog you can so head over there and go and leave us a comment tell us what you think we'd love to get to hear from people listening to this just to know that there are people out there we know you're downloading it we can see the statistics but yes. we just don't hear from you so go and go and let us know you're there go and let us know how how do you deal with this shit how do you deal with your depression and stuff and like work and all this kind of complicated life stuff how do you make it happen let us know and if you're feeling particularly fruity then please head to itunes and leave us a review or even if you are on like stitcher or something i think you can leave a review on stitcher or uh, what's it called overcast, overcast. or whatever .fm. just leave us leave us a review somewhere please it really helps we've got one review on iTunes now um, if we can get a, a few more on there it's really going to help us reach more people with what we're saying and you know we do all this for free so it'd be really cool to get a little bit of support and help reach some more people so that's about it that's a wrap as Thank always I've been Charlie Center and I've been Cristiano Prea. 